Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome and thank you for inviting me for this talk. And uh, I was even able to freely choose my topic. So I um, I'm trying to explain a bit about the bug class I really like, which is um, argument injection. And um, let's just start and see. So we'll have on the agenda um, the classic command execution, the OS command in injection. Uh, common countermeasures and argument injection as a kind of follow-up thing um, from those countermeasures. We'll have a look at the general concept behind it and have two examples where there's one I'll do a walkthrough of and then we'll have some conclusions obviously. So uh, let's see. Um, oh this is not so good. Let me just put it like this. So um, <clears throat> For the typical command injection, uh, we're we are somewhere here. We'll, um, we'll have a call to system, and then the shell will be invoked, and the shell will interpret a command. Um, and when we, as an attacker, are able to, to inject um, strings or substrings into um, the arguments, um, we can have shell meta characters in there. So we can have maybe backticks or a semicolon or um, somehow uh, convince the shell of running some some other command than the intended one or some other command in, uh, after the intended one. So this is what's typically uh, happening when you have a call to system in different programming languages. Um, it will invoke the shell and you invoke the command and its uh, arguments and <clears throat> the shell will interpret it as uh, basically as a small shell script. <clears throat> so, um, for instance, in Ruby, we can um, we can escape this in a way that we um, don't call the shell directly, but rather call the binary we want to call without the detour via the um, shell. So, in this case, we would have this syntax. We will use the shell. We will expand dollar home to my home directory. And if we then have this syntax where we separate this um, command and its argument, we will have the literal dollar home. So uh, its age won't be invoked directly, uh, rather would be echo directly, and we cannot eject any shell meta characters anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, there are different ways to do this, and we are we are somewhere here. So we give the program a, um, a, com a path name and the argument to that path we're just calling. So we're invoking the um, program directly, but we can maybe inject arguments to that, to that very common command. So this would work um, like this. If you ever considered a deleting a file, which is called minus a or dash a, you would see you you can you cannot you cannot copy it because um, CP will think here minus a is not a file name it's rather a uh, flag to CP so this is a very basic concept of argument injections um, for RM RM for to remove the file RM by now is a bit uh, more intelligent it tells you that this is an invalid option um, if you want to try to remove the file minus a you should call it dot slash minus a. So uh, RM wouldn't see it as a um, argument to to itself anymore. So um, this is like the very very basic concept of this. Um, and it just <clears throat> by argument injection, I'm I'm talking about exactly this concept um, for CWE88, which is a CWE common weaknesses in enumer enumerations for argument injection they interpret it a bit differently. So here, um, here we're talking about um, direct invocation of programs and we are able to influence one or more of the arguments to that very common com command, sorry. <laughs> um, so one, one example uh, would be um, a injection in the vulnerability in, in the CBT handler, which is a comic book handler backend of events, a popular um, PDF and document viewer on the Linux. And Felix Willem, who by now is, I think, at Google Project Zero, 
respond to the issue. And if you look at the slides, you can click this link to see the original advisory, which I'm taking part here. So what happened here, um, the CBT, the comic book file, is basically a tar file containing a number of um, images. <clears throat> and the images will be extracted from the um, tar file like this. And here we, um, we have two potential command um, argument injection points. One would be dollar archive and one would be dollar panem. So we could even maybe name the file in a special way, the, the containing CBT file, or we name the inner files within the tar file uh, after a, uh, in, in a certain pattern to, to exploit this issue of argument being injectable. So this is what Felix did in his advisory, and he created a file within the CBT archive, which was was called checkpoint action equals and then exec. And this is this is the argument to tar. Tar would see this instead of the panem to extract, it would see, oh, I should do a checkpoint action. This checkpoint action would be um, this bash line, which is to be executed, which tar just does. Um, subsequently. And the interesting part here, just as a side note, we can have a slash within a file name within the tar file because we can have the directory separator within the file, file name within the tar file. So we could even um, do things in other directories and just name the file accordingly. <clears throat> he proposed a fix with minus minus. Um, this is what his proposal to just when we look back at the original invocation to in include a minus minus here. And this is due to um, the, the standard way where how, how um, command line options are passed with get off would be if you have the minus minus, it would stop processing arguments and it would have here, um, here the arguments end and whatever comes afterwards is taken literally as whatever it's supposed to be and not as an um, argument. So this is one potential mitigation for such issues. And now we'll have a short walkthrough through another issue, which is a um, git client-side command execution. So let me just show this here. Um, we, are, we, are in, we are in a checkout of uh, git. And I compiled this version, um, which is the last one vulnerable to this very specific attack. Um, <clears throat> so when you use, um, just, this is it. when you use Git to um, uh, clone um, Git repositories by SSH, it would invoke SSH, we can see this um, here without any further tooling. We can just see that SSH is being invoked and we can uh, maybe to debug this attack vector a bit, we could try to use um, strace and tell it to trace all executions, or exec, exec VE calls. Um, and here we could see how SSH is being invoked, which is very helpful to see how we could possibly turn this into a um, argument injection. So we see here, uh, we are cloning tested localhost and we see this here. So we could try to first instruct Git to not take this as an argument because if you leave this out, Git would, um, with, would complain about the unknown switch um, minus T. So we want to, um, separate this with minus minus, so it stops the argument processing and take this literally as the SSH um, host name. So here we see uh, we can indeed here um, inject arguments. So let's try it in maybe dash V um, and it would, oh, it would, complain about a better escape character here. So I don't know what, but it must be the E. Um, let's do it that way. Let's 
Um, so, no, they do it another, another way around. So um, we can have an alternate syntax to clone from SSH repositories. So we can say SSH Can try to clone like this. Um, and we have to have the host to the URI syntax. So here we can now here we now have the dash v flag injected and can have um, debug output from OpenSSH, but this is like um, not really interesting. So uh, we 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 want maybe to inject other things, and um, as soon as I found <clears throat> within this issue that we can inject to SSH, I looked at the man page, and I found a um, very useful thing to do with SSH. We can uh, tell SSH to use a proxy command to connect to a host to a host. And this would um, this would in our case just execute this proxy command. So we are trying to clone a Git repo, and if we hide this in the repos URL, we we were uh, we would be able to execute those commands um, with the helper of SSH. So here we see in in the S trace trace we see SSH getting this proxy command, and then. Uh, my shell in um, executing this helper command to SSH because we just shifted uh, from what should be the host and the user here. Um, we shifted this into a command, to an argument, um, which would invoke our command we're, we're choosing. And here, this would be interpreted as the host we would actually try to um, try to SSH into, but it doesn't matter because the proxy command gets invoked beforehand. So this is how, how this exploit worked. And this is pretty much also how I um, discovered it by just using S trace and looking at how um, how Git behaves on a clone from, from certain different URLs. And this ultimately ended up in um, this issue being um, identified. So let me find my slides back. Um, So <clears throat> this is so much um, for for a walkthrough. Mm. So just the uh, the recap of this, um, we we try we, we invoke git clone for SSH URI, and then have the host part being. Um, the argument injection via git to SSH, which then will invoke our helper program, which we want to um, use or exploit. And in, in case of, in terms of exploitation, I made this for my proof of concept pointing to a binary within or a shell script even within the git repo, which was just cloned. So it's kind of self-contained. <clears throat> Um, from also from an exploitation point of view, it's hard to generalize argument injection on how to exploit it because it always depends on what the program you're able to inject arguments into is actually doing and if it is capable at all to um, um, to to execute subcommands or do something really bad. Sometimes it's only possible to override files or corrupt files or create empty files somewhere or create files somewhere and you don't fully control the files content um, stuff like this depending on how whatever is in being invoked is um, <clears throat> is working so um, this is the fun part to 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 um, actually find out how you can do the most useful exploit with the argument injection to a given program you're, you, you're, you've identified. <clears throat> so in um, and recap, from a defender's perspective, uh, it's, it's usually you should uh, try to, when you 
built your code and, and try to not put functionality uh, to not outsource it into subshell commands and maybe don't take you to the input um, right away in, in, into uh, into commands you're invoking. Um, <clears throat> Um, you you could also see if you can prefix the um, argument the the, um, the user control part with the proper argument so the user cannot break out of this, or you could use the minus minus to stop process, processing the user input at all. Um, and from an attacker uh, perspective, it's it might not be it might not be sufficient to have as a defensive measure um, to to have the uh, um, to 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 leave out the shell and just call the program with these parameters because the parameters and the arguments might be injectable um, again, and the impact for the exploitation is heavily dependent on what you have actually there, and you should always read the manual to to see what you're dealing with and how you could possibly exploit uh, and give the program, and for debugging and figuring out such um, such issues, it's usually a really good idea to trace or debug with, for instance, S trace in uh, order to find such such issues. Um, so this is so much about um, argument injection from my side. If you have any questions, um, please let me know.